Hey guys, what's up? Zijin Chang here. I'm trying out a new video format for smaller inexpensive devices because it's uh, less time consuming. Basically, it's going to be between an unboxing and a review. Uh, and I like to call it a feature review. It's way less time consuming than doing both an unboxing and a full review of the device as well. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Um, the device here that I'm going to be doing this is the Ulephone U Wear. Uh, this is Ulephone's first wearable device. And it's $25, which is extremely cheap for a smartwatch slash smart band. It's not quite a full smartwatch in, ter in terms of functionality, but it's also not, it's also has more function than a, than a smart band as well. Um, it's also water resistant and it has insanely good build quality. Um, so this body is metal. Um, the watch uh, body itself is like a rectangle and it's about the same size as, as Apple's uh, Apple Watch. It's not too long or too wide and it's, uh, it's a pretty good size for my wrists as well. Um, and the other thing is that the, uh, the glass here is 2.5D. Not sure if you guys know what that is, but just to explain, it's pretty much a curved glass. So it contours very nicely with the screen, uh, curves nicely from the glass onto, onto the round edges as well. So it's a nice continuous curve. Um, yeah, and the strap here is a rubber called fluoroelastomer. At first I thought it was like some kind of gimmick that they just slapped on a name for this rubber, but apparently Apple uses the same material for their uh, smartwatch band and their Apple Watch. And you know what? This band is so smooth and so good that I hate wearing watches. Uh, when I wear watches, my uh, my wrist gets all, uh, gets all uh, itchy and... Uh, rashes and stuff like that. And you know what? Wearing this strap for, um, you know what, like a day or two, and my, and my wrist didn't feel bad at all. It was just, it was perfectly fine. So this rubber strap is a real deal, and I really, really like how it feels as well. The watch is uh, IB65, uh, which means it's water and dust resistant. So you can go ahead and wash your hands or take a shower, and this thing should be just fine. So, uh, there's a power button right here, as you can see, I've been pressing it a few times. You press here, turns on and off. And there's also a micro USB charging port over here. And it's very tight to keep it water resistant. And because it's super tight, it's incredibly hard, hard to take out. Um, but once you take it out, it's, uh, yeah. But yeah, so overall, the build quality of the smartwatch is extremely good. Looks good. Um, feels good, rubber is good, everything is good. The only part that I like, dislike about this watch is, is how thick it is. It's, um, I think it's like nine millimeters thick. I would prefer a smartwatch to be a lot thinner, but I guess you can't ask too much from a smartwatch because you gotta pack all those components into this, uh, into this screen, so. And yeah, so let's, uh, let's move on to the screen of the smartwatch. So. Right here, doesn't look too bad, right? Uh, the resolution isn't that bad. But what happens when you go into here, also not bad. Once you go into the icons, you'll see that the resolution on this watch really isn't good. It's, uh, I think it's 128 by 128. <clears throat> That's the amount of pixels they have. And it's a 1.54 inch screen. And it, doesn't, it really doesn't look good. You can tell that the uh, icons are really jaggedy and everything. One more thing is that this screen is not an IPS panel, it's a TN, which means that when you tilt it, the color changes, as you can see. So I'm tilting it like that, you can see how the color changes. So just watch this icon in the bottom. Uh, wait a sec. Uh, this icon in the bottom, it's red. You tilt it, it goes to a different color. It goes purple, I think. So um, <clears throat> the screen itself here isn't very good. Uh, I really, it's really too bad. Okay, let's now move on to the audio. Let's have a listen to the speaker. Um, let's go. This is the Well Met podcast. Shout out to Well Met. You guys have a really good Hearthstone podcast. So. Wearable is pro, right? He likes to just own and manage things and people and, yeah, freedom. That was extremely loud and extremely good quality. Not even for a smartwatch, too. Kevin is awesome. Uh, like, there we go, Kevin. Uh, exactly. It's, it's always nice to have you out 
it's, ex it's insane. It's so, so good. I'm so impressed by the speaker on this, uh, on this smartwatch or smart band. And yeah, so I'm extremely impressed with the speaker. <clears throat> it's super loud. It's it's just great. Um, I love the speaker on this uh, on this uh, Ulephone you wear. And there's also a 220 milliamp hour battery powering this device. So battery life is not bad. I can get two days out of this watch. I don't get that many uh, notifications though. So uh, what's the battery life right now? It's still full. Yeah, so battery life is not bad. Uh, let's move on to software and performance. The Ulephone you wear is not compatible with the <coughs> with the MTK smart device app, but instead redirects you to a pretty sketch looking page, which asks you to install the Fundo app on the Google Play Store. Uh, Fundo. And it's pretty sketch but the app itself isn't that sketch, so this one I haven't installed. So right now my, and you also have to install the BT notifications if you want to get notifications as well. So, uh, so yeah, so let's talk about the main functions of the smart, of the smart watch. The first is health tracking. You can track your steps. Let's look for the pedometer. There we go. So start. There we go, see, 10 steps. So the pedometer itself is, um, like I've actually tried it. it. Like this isn't my uh, first time like waving around the watch, but I've actually tried the uh, pedometer and it's not bad, it's actually pretty accurate uh, with the amount of steps. Um, I've tried tracking my steps with my cell phone and that was not accurate, but this is pretty accurate. So yeah, there's um, also this, it's like a heart rate sensor and both are moderately accurate. Uh, you can save that information uh, into the eFundo app if you want. However, it does ask you to log into either QQ or WeChat, which is something I, I don't really like. So, uh, because people outside of Asia don't use this, so yeah. The second uh, function of this is the notifications. And the notifications work pretty, pretty good. Uh, okay, gotta get out of this. There we go. The notifications work pretty good. So, for example, I'm gonna text myself with this other phone over here. Oh, this is the Ulephone B Pro, by the way. If you guys remember, one of my first smartphones that I reviewed, Ulephone B Pro. Not bad, my sister cracked the screen, so let's see. Hello. Sense. Okay. There you go, see? F, hello. Exactly what I got. So, um, notifications work pretty well uh, when you get them, but the annoying thing about notifications on this is Let's cancel this and go to notifications, notifier. So for example, like this, let's say you want to dismiss it. You have to go to options, delete, yes. And you have to, you have to do that for everything too. Options, oh no, options, delete, yes. Options, delete, yes. Options, delete, yes. Options, delete, yes. There you go. That is one thing I don't like about the uh, notifications. Um, and next, there are a couple of functions as well. Uh, let's go through them. The first is remote capture. Remote capture, you can pretty much, this activates the, the watch on my, uh, sorry, this activates the camera on my phone. So when I hit this button over here, you can say disconnect beats music, yes. Disconnecting. Now, see, it started my camera. And let's turn it over. So as you can see, it's taking a video of the, okay, let's move this a little closer for you. 
like this. There we go. So. Let's turn it over. Make it easier. There you go. So you can see that it's uh, taking a video of whatever's going. But there's 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 some lag in here. Um, it's it's not really very useful, except if you wanna I don't know take a picture of somebody on the subway or take a video of somebody on the subway. You don't actually have to look at your phone. You can just point it, and then it'll you can see what's going on. So, but yeah. Um, okay, and then there's also remote music, which uh, I've also shown you before. Let's disable this capture back here, focus it in nice and for you. Bam, okay. And then there's also anti-lost. So what happens, so, so this is uh, allows you to look for your phone. For example, if I lose my phone, I can hit this, and it rings my phone. And I said, phone is stopped, okay. And let's say I lose my watch. I can do the uh, do it the other way around. Over here, looking for a watch, hit this. There you go. And you know what, this is actually a lot more useful than I thought because um, I lost my watch and then I couldn't find it. I hit that button and then it rang, so it's pretty good. Um, one more thing, and the rest of the apps over here, there are a couple of useless apps because we don't have the sensors for them. For example, the altimeter, which is like measuring the altitude of where you are. There's no point because there's not actually an app for that. Then there's the barometer. You don't have a pressure sensor in there, so there's no point. Um, what else is there? But yeah, so those are some useless apps in here. Other than that, that that's pretty much it for this, uh, for this smartwatch slash smart band. Uh, for $25, it's actually not a bad pur purchase at all. Um, just don't buy it expecting it to be a full-fledged smartwatch because it's not. You don't get to install a lot of apps on this. Um, it's more of a notifications device. Uh, so yeah, so thank you so much for watching my uh, new uh, feature review video and uh, have a great day. Uh, hit subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and click on any of the videos that should be popping up right about now.